The Athlon and the Phenom, two similar processors both released by AMD. The Athlon was first and was built to take on the Pentium D and later the Pentium Dual Core, but it couldn't really touch the Core 2 Duo, and that was the Phenom's job. The two that I have here released at nearly the exact same time, and as you can see, they're very similar with the Phenom edging ahead with its 6 megs of L3 cache, of which the Athlon has none. Both use the same multiplier, frontside bus speeds, as well as having only two cores. So while the Phenom pull ahead and justify its heavier price tag, now I couldn't find a lot of information on the price for this Phenom in particular, so I have a feeling that it was mostly used as a pre-installed OEM processor. The only info I could find suggested the MSRP was around $217, which was $140 more than, than this Athlon. Now personally, if I were to have gone with the Phenom at this point, I, I would have at least gotten a quad core, but to each their own. So was it worth it? Let's find out. Passmark CPU test shows the Phenom pulling ahead by 53 points, and the memory test is also about 50 points higher. In 7-zip, the Phenom finished nearly 2 minutes sooner, compressing the file about 600 kilobytes per second faster. Cinebench was also very close, but the Phenom finished roughly 30 seconds sooner, but it only scored about 18 points higher. In Handbrake, it was, again, very close, but the Phenom once again pulled ahead by about a minute and coded on average about 0.2 frames per second faster. For the YouTube test, I play a YouTube video in a browser with all hardware acceleration disabled. That way it's only up to the CPU to make it happen. This time, I have it set to 1080 at 30 frames per second. You can see both stutter and drop frames a bit at the beginning, but it smooths out once the on-screen display disappears. And well, both play okay, but the Athlon occasionally drops a frame here and there and seems much less amused, while the Phenom seems to be perfectly fine with it. Now this time in heaven I lowered the resolution to 720 to keep from maxing out the GPU. As you can see, the Phenom pulled ahead once again. Its minimum FPS was actually lower than the Athlon's, but the max FPS was far higher. For superposition, I left the settings at 1080 medium as usual, and you'll see why later. But with the GPU as the bottleneck, both scored essentially the same. Again, there's a method to my madness, and you'll see later when we get into the graphs. Unreal Tournament 3's benchmark absolutely maxed out each CPU, which is what I like to see. With this benchmark, we can really see the Phenom shine. Although it's not a huge amount, the Phenom consistently rendered at least 20 FPS higher than the Athlon. With GTA San Andreas being about 5 years old when these CPUs were released, it's very possible it was played on one of these. I mean, hell, people still play it today. As before, the Phenom run was consistently 10 to 20 FPS higher. GTA 4, the game that still runs like crap on modern CPUs. Here's the settings that I'm using as usual. And as I always say, it's not about the max FPS, it's more about uniformity between tests. Looking at the footage I captured, the Phenom was always about a few FPS higher, but as far as feel, they both felt about the same to play. Both were kind of laggy, and it just didn't feel good. The problem here, I think, is that there were only two cores. In all fairness, the Phenom once again pulled ahead in the benchmark by about 6 FPS, but again, you would never know it just by playing the game.
GTA 5. Yeah, both CPUs were pegged. Again, both of these were only dual cores. The Fino was able to render a few more frames per second, but once you got moving, neither could load textures fast enough. Here's a couple scenes from the game's benchmark that I synced up, and I'll just let them play and you can see. And of course, our beloved Portal 2 ran perfectly. The Phenom was always 20 FPS higher, but both felt fine to play. I ran Y Cruncher on both using the fourth option for 250 million decimal digits. And well, technically, the Phenom finished first. And although this graph may look like there's a big difference, if you look closer, you'll notice that the Phenom finished a fraction of a second sooner. Looking back, a larger test could have separated the two more, but really, at this point, I think we can see how similar the two processors are. So here are the results for the apps. As usual, I added a third CPU just as something to compare against. 7-Zip showed the largest improvement with a 25% difference between the Athlon and the Phenom. You'll also notice the Phenom very slightly beat out a Core 2 Duo from a previous test. The rest of the tests, however, showed only a 2-4% to difference in performance between the two. Now games. This is why gamers love AMD. The Phenom not only beat out the Athlon in all the benchmarks, but even the Athlon beat out the Duo in a few of them. Now take a look at the superposition graph. This is why I left the settings to what I had used before. Even though they were both bottlenecked by the GPU, they still pulled ahead of the duo. And as always, if you made it this far, I again want to say thank you. Uh, most of us had phenoms with three or more cores, so we remember them being far faster than their Athlon counterpart. But it seems that when you knock them down to the same core count, their performance seems really similar. Well, that's it for this video. Please remember to like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time.